What's up guys? Thanks for joining me here. I'm Dan Langan. Tonight it's all about the cake. You guys can see I've got breakfast on the brain. I created this entirely edible stack of pancakes. Huge stack of pancakes. The whole thing's a cake. It's a lot of fun to put together. I'm gonna show you guys just how I did it. So let me get this huge pancake cake out of the way. I'll put it right here for reference. And I'll grab another cake that I've prepared. This is a, a lemon uh, blueberry cake or a lemon berry cake. Uh, the recipe for it, we're gonna be sharing so you guys can check it out. And what I did was just fill this cake with vanilla buttercream, let it chill overnight, and I have it on a base, and connected to my base is a piece of copper tubing. The copper tubing is connected to the bottom of the base. Copper tubing is completely food safe. It's what your water runs through in your refrigerator. Um, so it's great to use for structure for cakes. So to make this gigantic pancake cake, first thing I have to do is roll out some uh, tan colored or I guess batter colored fondant. Um, so I rolled out some snakes of fondant and I did this ahead of time to uh, expedite this process. And after I rolled out snakes of fondant kind of irregularly, what I did was just flatten them down a little bit with my hands. Really simple. Because when we create these pancakes, what we're really doing is just creating just the very edge. So this huge pancake cake right here is actually cake on the inside. The only solid pancake is the one that's on top. So it's kind of like an optical illusion. Um, so once I have you know, my, my snakes of fondant rolled out, what I want to do is dust the very top of them. Um, and that's going to give the look that these were, you know, like on the grill or uh, on the griddle, whatever you call the thing you cook your pancakes on. So to get this nice brown color, I actually just mixed together some uh, yellow food dust and some Dutch processed cocoa powder. Um, so it's just like a nice natural color. And I'm just brushing this in nice and heavy. And then I'll use another brush to uh, get rid of all these like little excess um, bits of dust that are, you know, on the sides. So if you guys uh, are enjoying this video, if your friends are into cakes and baking, share this video so you can check it out later. Share it on one of your friends' walls so they can check it out and enjoy it. And you guys know I love talking baking and cakes and answering all of your questions. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing or questions about cakes or baking, whatever you guys want to know, uh, leave those questions in the, in the comments below. And if you are looking for the recipe for this cake, this lemon berry cake, it should be shared in the comments. Yeah, shared in the comments, good. So you guys can check that out there. Cool, so you guys can see I'm just brushing the tops here with this dust. And then what I'm gonna do is just take another kind of pastry brush and just use it to get rid of all of the excess. I'll get my original brush back too. Because I want the edges to stay uh, fairly just like light tan. Like, I only really want this color on the very top of the pancakes. So then what I'm gonna do is grab my pizza cutter, and I'm gonna get two uh, pancake slices out of each one of these little tubes right here. So if you guys wanna check out my Facebook, uh, the link to my Facebook is at the top of this video. It's Baked by Dan. You can also check me out on Instagram. I post a lot of cool stuff there. Um, usually before I do these lives here on uh, the Food Network Facebook page, I usually have a story uh, on my Instagram that shows like in process photos of how I got the cake ready. So follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you guys can find me there. All right, so I'll take my cake and I'll decide which is my front. I think this is my front because um, I like where the syrup bottle is gonna be here with where this copper tube is. So what I'll do is pick up my first piece, my first uh, piece of fondant, and I'm basically just gonna wrap it around and I want that uh, light colored side facing out and then I'll just stretch the two pieces to meet in the back and kind of push them together with my hands. I'll bring all of the seams to the very back of the cake and then I'll cover them up with some syrup drips so you really won't even see them once the whole thing is uh, put together. So I'll do that again so I also think it was pretty advantageous too to roll this fondant out ahead of time because it kind of set up a little bit. Uh, it's pretty warm here today in Pennsylvania actually. Um, so fondant is sweating, uh, it's really soft, cakes are soft. So I'm just taking a sharp paring knife right here and I'll just cut the edge flat and then I'll just push these two edges together. 
And I do want to try and like keep some space in between them. I don't want all the pancakes to sit perfectly flat on top of each other because that's not how pancakes roll, so you know. <laughs> so I'll just make sure this is nice and adhered to the cake. And the buttercream's pretty sticky, so I don't need to, you know, really like wet this fondant, but if the fondant wasn't sticking, I would just wet it with a little bit of water. So let me take you back down here. That's how the first two pancakes go. And I'll just show you again how I got this color. So I'll take one of my ivory colored uh, pieces of fondant, and I'm just dusting the very top with my mixture of cocoa and yellow food coloring. So if you guys are just joining, we are creating this epic stack of blueberry pancakes that are being covered with a gravity-defying uh, drizzle of syrup. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty sweet cake, uh, literally. Um, and inside the cake is a lemon blueberry layer cake. So, unless I forget, <laughs> um, I'll cut into the cake so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, so dusting the top here just to get that color, that look as if these pancakes were really cooked on the grill, and then just getting rid of that extra dust to keep my keep the side of my pancake nice and just ivory colored. And then I'll grab my pizza cutter, cut it straight down the middle. So if you guys um, create cakes yourself, if you're a cake artist, we'd love to check out some photos of what you've created. So uh, share pictures in the comments below if you guys have any of them. Um, and if you have an idea for a really sweet cake for next time, something else you would like to see in one of our broadcasts, let me know in the comments. So I decided to make blueberry pancakes because blueberry pancakes are my favorite. Um, I pretty much love anything blueberry, like blueberry pancakes or blueberry muffins. Totally my jam. Um, but you certainly could use whatever kind of fruit you want for this. Guys, let me know in the, in the comments below what your favorite pancake uh, accompaniment is. All right. So you guys can see this does take a little bit of time. Um, and another detail that I like to add uh, are these kind of air bubbles, like these little imperfections on the side of the pancake. Um, so pancakes, in baker's terms, would be considered like a quick bread because they get their leavening from usually baking powder, uh, maybe baking soda, but basically they cook from the heat of the pan, right? So there's always these cool little air bubbles in them on the sides because they're basically cake. So I'm just using a ball tool and uh, a Dresden tool is what it's called, or like a little sculpting tool, just to put some little holes and things in the sides. Makes it a little more realistic, I think. You can also kind of drag a line sideways. So if you guys have followed my work, you'll know that I'm totally into these gigantic food cakes. Um, it's totally my jam, so. Last week we created a huge avocado, it was pretty cool. I really like that. All right, so let me go here again. I'll grab another strip of my fondant that I've dusted with uh, cocoa powder to get the top nice and brown, nice and like griddle brown. And I'll just stretch the strip around so the two ends meet in the back. And I'll just kind of pinch those little ends together. My focus is really the front. So this is the front here. So I just want to make sure that each pancake is meeting up with the pancake strip below it. Good, looks good. All right, let's go in for another one. So tonight I'm using marshmallow fondant. A lot of people ask me what type of fondant I like to use. Um, and usually I make my own fondant just because I use so much fondant, it's easier to just make it. Uh, it's also cheaper. Um, so if you guys are looking for a really cool fondant recipe, um, just search online marshmallow fondant. It's pretty easy to work with. It tastes really good because it's uh, basically 50% marshmallow sauce. So if you like marshmallows, you'll like marshmallow fondant. Um, and whenever I'm kneading my fondant or rolling my fondant out, I like to use a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening in my hands to kind of add a little more moisture, a little more flexibility to the fondant. Keeps it from cracking. Awesome. It's starting to look like a stack of pancakes. All right. 
So let's bring it back here. I'll show you guys again, if you guys are just joining, how I'm getting this color. So I've rolled out some ivory colored fondant, about 24 inches long because I need it to fit around my eight inch cake. Um, so 24 inches plus a little bit of stretch uh, kind of gets me where I need to be. So after I roll out my fondant strip, I have some cocoa powder that I've mixed with just a little bit of yellow petal dust on my paintbrush here. And I'm just painting it on the very top of this strip. And then I'm gonna cut this strip in half. So to create this pancake cake, you guys will see in just a few moments, to get the gravity defying effect that's holding my uh, little syrup cup, I actually just used quarter inch copper pipe or copper tubing. You can find it at any hardware store. It's completely food safe because it's what your water runs through uh, in your house, you know, like in your plumbing. Um, and it's pretty sturdy. Um, it's easy to shape, so it's great for cake structure, um, but it can hold a good amount of weight. So it's good stuff to use if you're into building like gravity defying cakes. All right, so after I have the top of this strip dusted, I'll just cut it in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the more variation that is in this strip, the more variation I'll get in my pancakes, right? So I'll just pick this up, bring it around. You have any questions so far? No? No questions? The questions just aren't showing up, right? <laughs> All right, so get these strips to meet in the back, push them together. Whenever you're wrapping fondant around a cake, there's always a good bit of stretch. Uh, so like I said, I kind of just take the size of the cake, this is an eight inch cake, uh, multiply it by three, get 24 inches, and then 24 inches plus a little bit of stretch gets me completely around my cake. So it looks like just about two more will get us all the way around. So before I move on, I'll go back to what I was doing earlier here. I'm just using a ball tool just to make little uh, air bubbles in my pancake because the sides of pancakes always have those little fluffy uh, little bubbles, little griddly bubbles. Quick tip, if you guys are big pancake lovers like I am, uh, if you have you know a favorite pancake recipe and you're looking to uh, kick it up a notch, next time you make your pancakes, separate your eggs, add the egg yolks to the pancake batter as normal, and then whip the egg whites with just a touch of sugar to like a medium peak, and then fold those egg whites into your batter. Your pancakes will be fluffier than you could have ever dreamed. Super easy step, takes just a couple more minutes, and it really just kicks your pancakes up a notch. So. Try it out next time. So if you guys are just joining, I'm Dan Langan. Uh, I'm from Baked by Dan. You can check out my Facebook page at the top of this. You can also check me out on Instagram at Baked by Dan if you're really into these cool cake creations. Um, share this video, leave any uh, questions you guys may have in the comments below. And if you're looking for the recipe for the cake that I'm using tonight, it is a lemon berry cake uh, since I'm making blueberry pancakes. You can find that recipe pinned at the top of the comments. So I'm just wrapping these strips of fondant around the cake. My cake is nice and cold. Um, it's frosted with buttercream, but you guys know I really like ganache too, so ganache would work for this. Um, pretty much anything solid, or anything that gets solid uh, in, the, in the refrigerator. So sometimes it's helpful to use a sculpting tool to kind of push the edges of the fondant together if they're not really like meeting up. But like I said, this is kind of the back of the cake and I can cover this up with some syrup drips just like we have here. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so it looks like just one more strip should finish this up. So let's see, let's see if this final strip will finish it up. Whoop. All right. I think we're good. I think we're golden, just like these pancakes. All right, so my buttercream's already getting soft, gosh. So that's basically the making of a huge stack of pancakes. Pretty cool, huh? So just a few final details here before I put my top pancake on. Just a couple of air bubbles. A little bit of texture here to make these look like they're Nice and fluffy, like they just came off the griddle, right? Sweet. So if you guys want to get notifications or find out ahead of time um, when we are doing these live cake broadcasts, 
you can uh, first off make sure that you like and subscribe to the Food Network Facebook page. Um, check out my Facebook page, Baked by Dan, and check me out on Instagram at Baked by Dan because I always put something in my story as I'm preparing for these cakes. So you'll kind of get a little hint of what's to come on my Instagram. All right, so I'm just going to clean up my workspace, and I just want to dust away all of this uh, all of this cocoa powder. Just so I don't get any cocoa powder on my top pancake as I'm rolling it out. <clears throat> Alright, so to roll my top pancake, super easy. All I'm going to do is take a piece of fondant, uh, same color that I used to make all of my strips. Just make sure these are all nice and attached. Awesome. And before I even go to roll this out, I'll just take the fondant and I'll kind of give it like a little pinch, see if I'm going to get an 8 inch circle out of it. It looks a little small. I'm going to add just a little more fondant to it. I'll give this a nice knee. Uh, whenever you guys are rolling fondant, you always want it to be nice and stretchy. See how this stretches like taffy or bubble gum? It's not ripping. Um, not as important for rolling out a huge pancake, but if I were going to be covering a cake in fondant and I needed it to be nice and flexible, the stretch of the fondant would be really important. So I'm just giving this a nice roll and then kind of like shaping a little bread loaf, I'm just going to tuck all of the fondant under to get rid of any uh, creases or anything like that. And then grab my cornstarch, get a good bit of cornstarch on my table, a little bit on top, and I'm switching it up tonight. I'm using a good old fashioned wooden rolling pan as opposed to my PVC pipe. Um, so I want this to stay really circular. So every two or three turns, I'm going to turn it just like an eighth of the way, not even a quarter turn, um, just a little turn so it stays nice and circular. And I want my top pancake to be really thick and really hearty looking since it's the very top pancake. Um, so I don't want to roll this too thin. I'll stop in just a moment and check the measurement of it. Looks like I have a little air bubble. No big deal. Um, I suppose a pancake would have air bubbles in it anyway, right? But the cake decorator and me can't not pop an air bubble when I see it on top of my cake. All right, so I'll grab my uh, quilting ruler here. And awesome. I'm actually at nine inches. So eight inches on my cake plus the border of all my other pancakes should be perfect. So I'll give this just a few more rolls. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just take my sculpting tool and find what I think looks like the center of the pancake. And I'll make a little hole just as a guide for myself because what I need to do is fish this pancake over top of this one. Because you guys can see in this cake, there's a pancake on top, right? So that's how I got it on there. Just guiding this over. And I'll just stretch it into place. Oh yeah, the crowning glory. If any parts are too short, no big deal, I'll just stretch it a little bit. Awesome. All right, let me just get the buttercream off my hands. So same deal, I'll just add a little bit of texture to this since this is the final top pancake. A couple of air bubbles. So this uh, little seam or little mark at the top is going to be completely covered by our syrup in just a moment. So same deal, I'll go back with my cocoa and I'll use nice like circular buffing motions to add some color to the top of this. And then to add some real like charred grill marks, not charred, because gosh, you would never want a pancake to be charred, but to add some real uh, color marks to the pancake, I'm going to get my little creme brulee torch and hit just the top and sides of this cake for even more uh, color. Um, totally not necessary to use a creme brulee torch, but anytime I can pull the torch out in the kitchen, I'm always down to do it, so I figured that'd be a cool little effect for tonight. All right, so just taking this just to the very edge and all of this cocoa powder I'm gonna have to brush away uh, before I move on. So 
So if you guys are just joining right now, I am dusting uh, fondant to create the look of a pancake because we're making a gigantic stack of pancakes out of cake. Uh, but the inside isn't made of pancakes. The inside is made of uh, a lemon blueberry cake. And you can get that recipe at the top of the video. Cool. All right, so now away from my workspace, I'm just going to dust off any excess no one said that this was a uh, tidy process, so. Cool. Dust off any little bits from the sides. And then I'll just finish by dusting off my board. All right. Gosh, now I can get rid of this cocoa. It's confusing me because I'm looking at pancakes, but I'm smelling chocolate. All right, so let's see what I have to do next. Next, I have to grab my blowtorch. Let's see if we can get this thing to light. Yeah. There we go. So I'm just gonna take the blowtorch and just hit the sides of this pancake just a little bit and you'll see that it starts to like brown and bubble up. That's exactly what I'm looking for, just on the very edge. So it's all of the sugar in the fondant that allows this uh, caramelization to happen. Looks like I'm running out of butane, but you guys got the point there. <laughs> All right, so let me grab uh, my maple colored modeling chocolate. Um, and I'm actually using modeling chocolate, or I used modeling chocolate rather, to create all of these syrup drips, just because there's a lot of piecing together that goes on and modeling chocolate is really great for uh, kind of like being seamless or being able to have uh, seams that kind of heal themselves. So the first thing I have to do is cover my copper tube with a big piece uh, modeling chocolate that's going to be like the main syrup pour. So I'm going to roll this out fairly thin, like less than a half an inch thick, and it just needs to be the length of uh, this piece of copper tube right here. Um, and I don't need to add any type of... Where's my phone? There's my phone. I don't need to add any type of uh, sticky anything to this copper, um, you'll see that just by pressing it into the tube, it sticks. So the Molly Talk chocolate totally just sticks in place. And then I'll just pinch it around, just little by little, until the edges disappear, or until the, the tube disappears, rather, and the edges meet up. And then I'm just going to use the palms of my hands to smooth out the seam. So if you don't have modeling chocolate, uh, you totally could use fondant for this. Modeling chocolate is super easy to make. I have a recipe, uh, my favorite recipe for modeling chocolate on my website as well. So if you head to bakingwithdan.com, uh, you can find it. Right, so I'm just pinching this until the edges of the modeling chocolate or the seams are completely together. And then what I'm gonna try and do is just with a really light touch, I uh, can't go too heavy here because it's super warm and this stuff is super soft, but I just want to use the soft parts of my fingers and like the palm of my hand to kind of smooth this out. Awesome. All right, that could be smoother, but to move on, I'll show you guys to make this syrup pour. I just want to roll out some of this modeling chocolate pretty thin. Um, so I'll start with a little circle here. I'll grab some cornstarch. I'll need a good bit of cornstarch for this so it doesn't stick. Put some on top. Basically, I'm just going to roll out a circle and then cut out uh, like a pour shape. So just like a, in a really irregular circle. And that will, that will be the, the pour shape that I'm looking for. That looks good. So let me grab a really sharp uh, craft knife. This is actually a scalpel. Uh, so when I'm decorating cakes, I really like to use scalpels because they stay so sharp. Um, you can find scalpels online. 
Um, they're actually about the same price as a regular craft knife, and they just stay so sharp that they make cutting fondant and modeling chocolate like super easy. It's such a dream uh, cutting modeling chocolate or fondant with a scalpel. All right. So, same as when I put my top pancake on, I'll find kind of like a centerpiece here. I'll have to make the hole a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to fish this over my piece of copper tube. Lay it down there. Get rid of this cornstarch, I'll press it into place. And then what I really want to do is just soften this edge. Let's see here. Um, what I want to do here. My modeling chocolate's moving around a little bit, so just a little bit of vegetable shortening under it will make it just sticky enough to not move. Quick tip there. All right, so as I was saying, just to kind of soften this edge here, make it look a little more natural like an actual syrup form, I'm just going to take my finger, just soften this edge a little bit. And then now I need to hide this seam right here. I want it to look really natural, like syrup is actually pouring on top of the uh, pancakes. So I'll take some of this modeling chocolate again. I'm gonna roll a little sausage. Place it around there. Kind of push it down just lightly. Kind of just insinuate that it's still kind of pouring out. And then I'll just pinch this top part up so that it meets this main pour. Awesome. All right, so now what I want to do is add my little, uh, little syrup cup. I don't know what you would call it. I was going to call it a pour, but that's truly not what it's called. A little uh, <clears throat> syrup carafe, I guess. So this is just a cylinder of modeling chocolate, the same brown color as the syrup, and I paneled it in a piece of white modeling chocolate and chilled it until it was nice and cool. So what I'm gonna do here is just plunge uh, the little cup right onto this copper tube here. Is it solid modeling chocolate? It is solid modeling chocolate. Okay, let me just look at the front here, make sure I didn't ding anything. So I'm just gonna add two little bits of modeling chocolate here just to kind of further reinforce that the syrup is actually pouring out of this little thing here. Give that a little smooth. Awesome, so back down to this uh, syrup right here. Like I said, I'm just using my fingers or the soft part of my hand just to smooth this out. So now what I want to do is create a few larger syrup drips, just like here. And don't let me forget, I'll get to that handle in just a second. That's kind of one of the last things I want to put on. But to make some of these syrup drips, I'm going to take more modeling chocolate. I'll just roll it until it's smooth. And I'm going to roll a teardrop shape. So I want to kind of get rid of any extra cornstarch here because I don't really want a lot of cornstarch on this, otherwise it's not going to stick to the cake, and that's not cool. Alright, so teardrop shape. Round it at the bottom, cut one end flat, Let's see, and I'll attach this right here. So to do this, I'm just going to pinch one end so it's kind of flat, attach it there, and just press it into place. And I'll flatten out the top uh, because if it's dripping, it'd be kind of flat here, but then I'll try and leave the side nice and rounded, right? Massage that seam out with my finger. And I'm going to be brushing this modeling chocolate with, um, with vegetable oil or like cooking spray uh, to make it nice and shiny. So since the modeling chocolate is fat-based, um, it really likes to uh, be brushed with vegetable oil to get nice and shiny because 
Well, vegetable oil is fat, and that's what modeling chocolate's made out of. <laughs> that's the only way I could describe it. Um, there are many ways to make modeling chocolate and fondant shiny. Um, brushing it with cooking spray is one of the easiest. So I'll do one more drip on here. Let me get just a little bit more of this brown. Where did I put my brown? Modeling chocolate. Not sure where that got to. Okay, so in the meantime, <laughs> what I have to do to finish up my stack of pancakes is make some blueberries, because after all, these are blueberry pancakes. So to make my blueberries, I have some dark navy colored fondant. And I added a little bit of Tylos powder to this just to stiffen it up. Um, to get this color, I mixed together black, purple, and some navy blue. Um, and to turn them into blueberries, or to turn this fondant into blueberries, basically I'm just going to knead it until it's nice and soft, and then roll it into a ball in my hands to get rid of any of the seams. I'll set that down for just a second. I'm going to grab a, a little star cutter just to add like a little five point of indentation to the top. And then I'll grab my little ball tool, and I'm going to press it into the center, and then kind of pull it out up in a few spots and then pinch it back together. I think that looks pretty, pretty blueberry-like. All right, so I'll show you guys that again. Taking a little bit of this navy blue or blueberry colored fondant, roll it into a nice smooth ball. Hit it with a little five-pointed star just to make it look like a little, you know, where it like came off the stem and then rough it up just a little bit with my ball tool. Place that right there. All right, so let's add one more of these uh, syrup drips to the cake. I think these are really fun. So, to make my syrup colored modeling chocolate, super easy. A little bit of golden yellow, a touch of uh, copper, and then some brown. Gives you this awesome uh, syrup color. So, a lot of times I've seen pancake cakes where people use actual syrup. That's cool. Um, but I think it's a little too like thin and see-through. I really like how this, uh, how the modeling chocolate looks. So that's why I decided to go with modeling chocolate. Alrighty. So I'll pull the top nice and thin so that I can blend it into my top syrup piece right here. Sweet. All right, so. To finish up my little uh, little syrup pour here, I just want to add a little handle. So really simple. I'm just going to take a little piece of white fondant, flatten it down a little bit, get some cornstarch so that it's not sticky. And this cake is about to come together. If you guys are just joining, you're seeing the final uh, crowning glory, the final few moments of this huge stack of blueberry pancakes come together. So make a little handle, I'm just going to let's see if this works. Perfect. Cut a little strip of white modeling chocolate. Make it just a little bit thinner. And I'm going to attach this to my syrup cup at the top of my cake. So to do that, wet that just a little bit. Hopefully it sticks. Um, it's really hot in here, so we'll see. So I'll pull one end in and then pull the other end in. This takes me back to my days in the uh, ceramic studio. Cool, pretty simple there. I don't want to fidget with this too much because it's uh, really kind of hot. But there you go, little handle there. So now I want to make this shiny. I want this uh, this syrup to uh, really glisten, like real syrup, right? So I like to just take regular old cooking spray, spray some of it into the cap, uh, grab a paintbrush. Let's see, here we go. I start so organized, and then I'll tell you, once I start working, everything is just crazy. All right, so just by brushing some vegetable oil, just onto the syrup, it gets really shiny. Um, and when I'm doing this, I like to be really careful because obviously I don't want the pancakes to be shiny, I only want the syrup to be shiny. Um, so I'll just 
brush it on. And this usually lasts uh, for quite a while. The oil isn't really going to absorb into the modeling chocolate too much. Uh, but if it did, I would just, you know, rebrush it before, before the celebration. Um, but this cake isn't for a party. Um, both of these pancake cakes uh, or are just for me. So. Lucky you. Lucky me, right? So I'm just brushing this here with this vegetable oil to get it nice and shiny, nice and syrup-like. Get this little guy right here in the back. So I think the best part about this cake is that, well, number one, it's, it's uh, so huge, and then it looks like a huge stack of blueberry pancakes, but it actually is blueberry cake on the inside. Um, so I guess you really can't eat cake for breakfast, right? I eat cake for breakfast sometimes anyway, so it's all good. All right, so let's finish this up. I have some big old pats of butter here. Super easy. All I did was take some really uh, light yellow modeling chocolate and cut it into squares and just round the edges just a little bit. So let's see, where's my front? This is my front, right? Let's add some big pats of butter. And I'll start with some blueberries. So whenever you're placing stuff on a cake, it's good to kind of place it in like groups of three um, because things look good in groups of three. So three or five or, you know, maybe even one uh, would be good. Let's see, I'll put one down here in the front. Another one right there. So really quickly, I'll show you guys one more time how I made these blueberries. A little bit of my navy color fondant. Uh, give it a little knead so it's nice and soft so I can roll it into a circle or roll it into a little sphere. I almost said a square, definitely not a square. Take a little five-pointed star cutter, giving the look of the top stem part of the blueberry. And then I'll pinch it back together just a little bit. There we go. Put that one on the side. And I'll put a few more on the top. Why not? There we go. So that's how I like to make a huge cake that looks like a stack of blueberry pancakes. I'm going to cut into this. I'll show you guys exactly what it looks like on the inside. And I also have one I'm not going to cut into. <laughs> Let me grab a nice sharp knife and a plate and a little paper towel. If you guys have any final questions, leave your questions in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Facebook at Baked by Dan. Check me out on Instagram at Baked by Dan and uh, share this video if you have anyone you think would, you know, enjoy it. So let's see, I'll cut into the back of this, right where the seams are. So straight down with my knife. Oh yeah. I always like to clean my knife in between cuts. Makes a much nicer cake slice. All right, let's see how I did here. Oh, it looks good. That's just a lot of cake. So it's a lemon blueberry cake. Looks like most of the blueberries sunk to the bottom. But there you go, that is the inside of the blueberry pancake cake. It's a pretty sweet deal. This piece is all for me. I'll try and come for it. <laughs> so guys, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you have a cool idea for a sculpted food cake or any kind of cool cake project, let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, you can hit me up on Facebook at Baked by Dan or leave your questions in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. You guys have an awesome week. I'll see you all soon. Thanks.